Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you what you can do with the new Steam Deck OLED in dock mode or desktop mode. Now, first and foremost, the Steam Deck is meant to be a handheld gaming PC, but that's not going to stop us from connecting it to a larger display. Now, with some of the older games, we can actually upscale to 1440p. I'll show some stuff off by the end of this video, but one of the main reasons somebody actually might want to do this is for desktop mode. After all, the Steam Deck OLED is a full-fledged Linux-powered PC, and you can definitely get work done. You can watch some 4K videos from YouTube, Netflix. There's a ton of stuff we can do on the Steam Deck, and personally, you know, connecting it to a larger display is the way to go, in my opinion, when it comes to using it as a desktop PC. Now, before you can get this up and running, there are a few things you're going to need. Obviously, first up, Steam Deck. I prefer the Steam Deck OLED, but if you've got the LCD Steam Deck, it'll also work. Another thing I highly recommend is some type of wireless keyboard. Now, you could always use a wired keyboard if you want to, but these things are a dime a dozen nowadays on Amazon. This uses a single dongle. We've got that keyboard and mouse. I'll leave some links to everything in the description. Another thing I would highly recommend is if you want a game on a big screen is a secondary controller. If you've got an Xbox controller, PS4, PS5, or a Switch controller, you can always connect it to the Steam Deck over Bluetooth. And finally, you'll need some way to connect your Steam Deck to a larger display. Now, some newer displays do support USB Type-C video in, but these docks are pretty cheap. This is not the official Steam Deck dock from Valve. This is one of the cheaper options that I found on Amazon, and it will do up to 4K 60 or 1440p 120 hertz. It's got power in, HDMI out, three USB 3.0 ports, and gigabit ethernet. Actually, really nice little option. Again, I'll leave links in the description. And if you don't want to use a dock, you can go with a cheaper USB Type-C to HDMI hub. About $15, 15 to $30 over on Amazon. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here we are in desktop mode with the Steam Deck OLED. And given the price of this thing, even for the base 512 gigabyte model, it's definitely outperforming a lot of the mini PCs on the market right now. So as you can see, the way I've got this set up right now is just single monitor. We're using that external as our main display, but you can always set this up to have both of these displays working if you'd like to. Personally, I like having a single display, but it's pretty easy to do if you wanted to go ahead and use the built-in screen also. It could definitely come in handy for some applications. Basically, from the desktop, we're just going to right-click. We'll go to our display settings, and we'll need to enable the secondary monitor. Now, I'll tell you, once you plug this in, your primary monitor will be the built-in screen of the Steam Deck. You're still going to have to get in here and set it up the way you'd like, but there's several different configurations that we can use here. Personally, I like having a single monitor, so I'm just going to set it up just like that. And now we can get right into it. Now, obviously, if you're coming from a Windows PC, this might look a little different to you, but it's very familiar. We've got a basic desktop setup. So down in the lower left-hand corner, we've got our little app panel. You can show all applications, or it's categorized by like games, internet, education, productivity, and there's a lot of apps installed here. Now, when it comes to web browsing on the Steam Deck as a desktop, it's really snappy, especially now that we have Wi-Fi 6. And if you're using a dock or an adapter that supports Ethernet, you can always plug it in like that. But as you see, just heading over to the Steam Deck website, all these images populate very quickly. And that's one of the main use case scenarios for a PC, browsing the web. I mean, how many tabs do you have open up right now? You can go with basically any browser you'd like. I personally like using Google Chrome, but you could also install Chromium. You can install Firefox, and I'll show you how to install more applications without even having to touch terminal. So you won't have to type anything out. You can kind of click and choose what you want to install. It's pretty easy here with the way they have everything set up. And if you're not into Google Chrome, luckily we do have Firefox pre-installed. It will have to download some updates once you start the application up. But when it comes to 4K video playback, I've actually had much better luck with Firefox, which is a bit odd because usually on lower end PCs, I go with Chrome or Edge if we're using Windows. But right now I'm in Firefox. We're going to check out some 4K video playback. The Steam Deck is actually a really great media playback device, and the built-in screen is only 800p, but luckily we can go up to 4K from USB Type-C to HDMI. This is a 4K monitor, but right now I do have it set at 1440p, just so we can see everything a bit better. And you could always go into the system and scale it up if you want to run it 4K, but personally I find 1440p at 100% ratio is kind of a sweet spot, at least for me. And right now we've got a 4K 60fps HDR video up and running with Firefox and YouTube. And playback is great. Now, we did have a few drop frames throughout the whole video. By the end, we had 25 drop frames, something you'd never notice if you didn't have that frame counter on screen. 
So yeah, I mean, it does 4K video playback. So if you wanted to head over to Netflix, HBO, Hulu, you could always do it from your favorite browser. So I've already covered two of the main things that I do with my desktop PC, web browsing and YouTube video playback. And like I mentioned, there are some useful apps pre-installed here, but a lot of us probably need a few other things. And most of us probably don't want to go through the hassle of opening up Terminal and installing them that way. Luckily, we've got Discover installed here. This is basically an app store. We've got our sections over here. We can go to our internet, find new browsers, education, productivity. There's a gaming section, emulator section. Basically, if you need an application to do something on the Steam Deck in desktop mode, you can probably find it here. Let's say photo editing. One of my favorite applications for Linux is GIMP. Very low learning curve and is constantly updated. If you've ever used Photoshop or Microsoft Paint, then you'll probably have a good idea on how to use this application. It's actually a really powerful photo editor, but I've got just a simple demo that I wanted to show off here. Now, if you wanted to get in with photo filters and everything like that, you could always do it. Supports multiple layers, but basically I've just imported a photo that I got online. I wanted to change the color of this car and I'm gonna do it with the Hue tool. There's several different ways that you could go about this. I mean, you could lasso everything out if you wanted to, but uh, Hue works for what I wanted to do real quick. Now I'm just gonna save this as a PNG. Actually, we need to export it with GIMP. I'm gonna export it to my pictures folder. Once that's finished, we can head over there and we've got our edited photo. Super simple demo, just wanted to show you that it does work out really well on the Steam Deck. Editing documents, creating spreadsheets and things like that can be super important for some people's line of work. So from here, we can actually head over to Discover we're going to download LibreOffice. This is a full suite, kind of like Microsoft Office, but it's free, constantly updated. It's got everything we need here. Once this installs, we can go ahead and launch it. And it looks a little like this. Now, it actually gives you a nice little walkthrough the first time you start this up. Spreadsheets. Uh, we've got a document editor. You can import a PDF if you'd like to. And uh, we've also got a little drawing section. So everything we need for document editing is here with LibreOffice, another free application. There's also a game section over here in Discover. Uh, these aren't going to be games like you can play on Steam, but there's some pretty cool little Linux games here. We've also got an emulation section, so you can actually download standalone emulators and use them directly on the desktop. And of course, if you wanted to individually add these to Steam and use them in gamepad UI modes, you could. But we're going to go with PSP here using PPSSPP. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, and now we're playing some PSP games in desktop mode on the Steam Deck OLED. After all, the Steam Deck is really a full PC. We've got an x86 CPU, Linux operating system. Now, if you wanted to install Windows, you could do it, but I would suggest just sticking with Linux here. It does work out really well, and Valve has been doing a lot of updates to make life much easier for people who just have never really even used Linux before. But when it comes down to it, my main use case scenario for the Steam Deck is gaming. Obviously, it was created as a gaming machine, and now we're connected to a higher resolution monitor, actually even a higher frame rate monitor. Right now, I've got Forza Horizon 5 running at 1080p, we're at low settings, and I've got VSync on, set at 60. We can actually run this game at a pretty steady 60 FPS at 1080p on an external monitor. Again, we've only got an 800p display built into the Steam Deck, and it does look good because it is a smaller 7.4 inch on the OLED, but just having a little extra resolution or even a larger screen can make a huge difference. And some of the older games that we have here can actually run it up to 1440p. I'll show some of those off in a second. But Forza Horizon 5 does run really well here at 1080. And you can see it doesn't quite stick at a 60 FPS. We do get some of those drops. So that's why I suggest getting a monitor that supports variable refresh rate. That way we don't get any screen tearing or anything like that. And to me, it just makes it a much smoother experience. Either free sync or variable refresh rate that's compatible with AMD will work out. Next game I wanted to show off was Left 4 Dead. I know it's an older one, still a lot of fun to play. But with this, we can actually go up to 1440p. It'll run over 60, but I've got it locked down right now. As you can see, 1440p. We are at medium settings, and we can actually do a medium high mix if you want to. I just set it here because I still think it looks great. No resolution scale, so we are at a true 1440p. 
and it's running amazingly. I mean, we've got a locked 60 FPS with this at 1440p on the Steam Deck OLED. So it's definitely possible to run these older games at a much higher resolution on the Steam Deck OLED. But unfortunately, you know, when it comes to the harder to run games, you're just not going to be able to upscale much. In fact, I've actually taken this to 720p low settings with Cyberpunk 2077. And at low settings with FSR set to performance, we can get an average of around 54 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077. But as soon as we take that resolution up, it's going to fall on its face, unless you don't mind running at 30 FPS. You can do this 1080p locked at 30 low settings with FSR set to performance. Personally, I've always loved running the Steam Deck in dock mode when I'm not on the go, and this really doesn't change anything. You've still got a handheld gaming PC, but with this, you can game on a big screen, or if you need to use it as a full-fledged desktop PC, not a problem with a dock and a monitor. I'll leave some links in the description below to a few things that I'm using here, like the dock and keyboard, but you know, it's really up to you. If you've already got a wireless keyboard or even a wired keyboard you want to use with this, you can, and you don't specifically need a dock. You could use a USB Type-C to HDMI dongle if you wanted to do that, but having it docked and set up so you don't have to worry about that fan being blocked off is really nice. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.